Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. This is Winning Cures Everything, and this is the college football and NFL. We'll split them up. Don't worry, YouTube. We got you. Gambling picks segment of the show. I am so uh, uh, psyched about this. I'm pumped about this because last week I was god awful. I went two and six last week, lost one hundred eighty four dollars and nine cents. Chris went three and four, lost one hundred fifteen dollars and ninety one cents. You can keep up with that, by the way, on the spreadsheet over at winningcureseverything.com in the gambling picks section of the site. Ah, on today's show, we're going to have a special guest that'll join us weekly from the Three Dog Thursday podcast, Mr. TJ Reeves. He is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter. He is based down in Tampa Bay. He does a fantastic podcast. Make sure you go listen to him. We will have him after we go through some of these here. Uh, we're going to start with our college football gambling picks. We will move into NFL after that. If you're watching on YouTube, that will be a different video. Just so everybody knows. Uh, Pick'em contest last week. Matthew C. Went 7-3. and three, Won the tiebreaker. He got himself a tunica prize pack. You can get yourself one this week. Go over to the Pick'em page. Football Picks Contest. Over at winningcureseverything.com. Check it out. It's all brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. The South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information about them at tunicatravel.com, or just go down to the description, click the link, it'll send you right there. You'll figure out all the different prizes you can win, all the different things you can check out while you're down there. It is really, really awesome. So join in the Pick'em Contest. See if you are better at picking games against the spread than everybody else. We're going to have seven college games, three NFL games. They are already up, locked and loaded, ready to go. Get your picks in. Let's fire in. You ready to jump into college football? Yeah. All right, so how many have you got this week? You guys, I've got see. six. Six this week. I've got, man, I think eight or nine. So I'll, I'll start us out. How's that? All right. If you got that many, go ahead. All right, I'll start us out. I will start us out. First game up for me, LSU in Texas. I've got $75 on this one at minus 110. I've got Texas plus six here. Tom Herman, 13-2-1 and one against the number all time as a head coach, eight two and one at Texas. Really good at home as well. I like Texas here. I think Sam Ellinger is a significantly better quarterback than what they faced with Shy Words last week in Georgia Southern. I think Texas has got more talent. I understand all the analytics coming into the season talking about how much experience they lost and how much production they lost and da 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 da. It, it's a little bit different when you are replacing experience with talent, right? Same thing happened at Alabama with Nick Saban. Same thing happened with Urban Meyer at Ohio State, at Florida, et cetera. It, this happens, right? I am all in on Texas here. I don't know that they win the game. I think they probably don't win the game. Would it shock me if they do? No. But you give me six points, you give me almost a touchdown. Give me that all day long. I'm on the Longhorns plus six for $75 at minus 110. So I'll go ahead and get that one out of the way then. I've got LSU minus six <clears throat> for 50 bucks. And <clears throat> I, I think this is going to be a close game, but I think LSU can win by a touchdown. I, I don't know that anything we saw last week matters, okay? I, I don't care what any analytic numbers say I agree. about both of these teams. They beat up on inferior opponents. Now they're going to play real boys, big boys, and this is going to be the metric. If LSU wants to hang with Alabama, with A&M, with Auburn, in the SEC West, with Georgia, in the SEC overall, if they have a shot to win the SEC, they have to be able to go into Austin and beat Texas. I agree. I think they could do that. I thought they were that team before the season started, and I still think it now. Um, Vegas is also doing some little funny stuff to where the betting numbers are even on both sides, and yet they continue to raise the number, and not raise it a little bit, but they've raised it a lot. Okay, it opened yeah, at four it and a half. 
and it's now six. It's only like 57% of the tickets yeah. on LSU right yeah. now. And so yeah. they, they already have even money on both sides, and they're continuing to move the number. Yeah, it's I don't know why that is, um, but I'm going to tell you this, that, that the boys in Vegas think one way I'm going with them. I'm going with my guys, too. I can understand it. All right, let's move on. Next game for me, I am... And it, so we went head-to-head head the first one. I think we're probably going to go even on this one. We're, we're going to match up here. Okay. Syracuse plus two and a half at minus 110 at Maryland. I I don't understand this line whatsoever. It opened Syracuse minus two and a half. And what is it, like 80% of the tickets are on Maryland right now? Yep. Uh, Let me public, get back there. Public loves Maryland because they hung 79 on a nobody last week. That is ridiculous. Yes, Josh Jackson looks great. That's fine. Uh, But I'm telling you, Dino Babers has got a fantastic football team there right now. I am all in on Syracuse plus the two and a half. Uh, I think that this defense is legit. I think that Maryland uh, has not seen anybody like this this year. I, I And I've seen Mike Loxley as a head coach. I, I've seen him in, in adverse situations. We'll just say I'm going to trust Dino more than Loxley, especially right now. Year one, they got their big win out of the way. They, they hung 79 on a team that did not deserve to be beaten that badly. Uh, but, man... Hey, give me Syracuse, seventy-five dollars at minus one ten plus two and a half. Yeah, congratulations, you beat up on a lesser, weaker kid. Yeah, I, I hope you feel better about yourself. Dino's bringing a crew in. They're not Howard, my friends. I promise you that. They're going to come to play, and 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 they're going to be aggressive. They're going to hit you in the mouth. They're going to be tough. And and I I like Syracuse. I like them a lot. I I thought this line was minus two and a half. Still, when I looked at it and. You kind of corrected me on that. I just couldn't believe it. And then I went to Vegas Insider. Seventy percent of the bets are coming in on Maryland. Yeah, I just, I just can't see it. I, I've been wrong before. We've both been wrong. I got a hundred dollars on Syracuse. Whew. All right, hundred dollars on Syracuse. What, uh, what'd you have on LSU? Fifty. Fifty on LSU. All right. Now, uh, my next bet, same game. I'm going the over 57 on this. I understand Syracuse only put up 24 points on Liberty. I think that had a lot to do with the situation, right? Hugh Freeze, coaching in the hospital bed, Dino Babers, class guy, uh, understood that Liberty was not going to score on his defense. There was no reason to, to hang a ton of points here. I think that these two teams will have to score with each other. I'm not saying that Syracuse is completely shutting down Maryland to get this win. I just think that they win the game. And could I see this being a 35 to 31 ball game? A hundred percent. A hundred percent I could see that. The metrics have got it at 61.79 for the total. I'm all in on that. I think this game goes well into the 60s. I'm going to go with the over 57 here. I'm putting 50 bucks on that one. So next game, I'm going with one of the biggest games of the weekend. We already played the, the one big game, Texas LSU. Going the other one. AM going down to Clemson, catching a lot of points, 17 and a half. I know Clemson's really good. I know Clemson is a tough, tough football team. This AM team thinks they can hang with them. AM, <clears throat> I don't know that they belong in the same conversation yet, but they're not far from it. Okay. I like AM to keep this thing close. I think this is going to be the hardest game Clemson plays all year. I could see that. And, and at some point in time, if somebody's going to challenge them, it's going to be Texas A and M. I could, I could one hundred percent believe that. <clears throat> Give me fifty bucks plus seventeen and a half minus one ten. I like it. I like. I'm with Jimbo. Mike Mike Elko could keep this thing kind of dirty, right? Yeah. Like people are loving the under or the uh, the over on sixty four and a half. Yeah, I don't and know. And I. I don't know. Don't you, get me wrong. You got two. You got two defensive coordinators that that are going to show up. Yeah, I, I do agree. They got they got some inexperienced guys. They got young guys on defense on both sides. But man, I'm telling you, these two defensive coordinators, they are as legit as it gets. Uh, next up for me, Friday night game, Marshall going to the Blue Turf, the Murder Smurfs, 
as uh, who is it? Solid, the solid purple, I think, calls them that. Yeah, the, the murder Smurfs. I'm in on Boise State. They showed me everything they needed to show me against Florida State. Minus 10.5 is the line at minus 110. I'm putting $100 on them. I like Boise State in this spot at home. I'm telling you, uh, the metrics like this as well. Metrics have got it Boise minus 13.5. It's 8 p.m. ESPN2. Man, Boise looks legit on both lines. I needed to see Hank Bachmeyer. I needed to see him and what he was going to be able to do. That dude is legit. They got a running game that is legit. They can beat you up. I understand Marshall has got an offense. I get that. But I'm telling you, Kendall Bryles also has an offense. And Boise wore him down. Just destroyed him. Yes, didn't only, score a point in the second did, half. Yeah, didn't score a point in the second half. They went from 21 points in the first quarter, 10 points in the second. Goose egg, goose egg. I'm all in on the Broncos. Give me Boise State minus 10 and a half for $100. Yeah, I like that pick a lot. All right, so I'm coming home to the state of Mississippi. Ooh. All right, we got a little in-state crime. Mississippi on Mississippi hate right here. Southern <laughs> Miss plus six and a half at Mississippi State. 16 and a half. 16, I'm sorry, yes, I misspoke. Yeah. 16 six, and a half. Six and a half might have changed your uh, might have changed your bet. I don't, Come on, man. <laughs> Listen, come on down to Starville. But Mississippi State's going to be fired up. They get to come home. This is their home opening game because they went to New Orleans to play that last game and against Louisiana. And they were good. They weren't great. This, that, this, that Joe Moore, have some problems. this Joe Moore head offense didn't, didn't look too, too great. And the defense had a hard time stopping. I think Southern Miss is a good football team. Oh, I agree. Now, I don't know that Southern Miss can win this game. I was joking about that. But but I, I think Southern Miss can hang with this team. I like when the little schools from the same state play the bigger schools from the same state because they're recruited by the same people and they didn't get in. They kind of feel left out. They got a chip on the shoulder. You kind of foreshadow into another pick, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. But I'm putting $75. $75 on, on, on Southern, Southern Miss. Miss. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Okay, okay, I'm with you. I smell what you're cooking. I'm going with one that a lot of people probably won't agree with. And I understand it because, I, look, as Big Cat and the Pardon My Take guys like to say, life is too short to bet the under, but not when you're winning money. All right? So if you're going to win a bet, might as well, right? Oregon State, Hawaii, under 78 and a half. I got $50 on it at minus 110. This is an 11 p.m. game on Facebook. Now, the over might hit by like the third quarter, maybe. The metrics have this at like 72.54. I think both of these teams like to turn the ball over. I think that both of them understand how the other one works. I like the under 78 and a half here. I think that this is more of a 42 to 35 kind of game, which is 77 <laughs> points. Uh, but I, I could see this being 38-31, all, all kind of different stuff here. So... I'm going under 78 and a half for 50 bucks at minus 110. All right. I'm going with another big dog. Those same kids from the state of Ohio, Cincinnati, tried to get into Ohio State, wanted to play at Ohio State. Ohio State said, you're not good enough. We take nothing but five-star blue chip athletes. Gary talks about it all the time. But hey, they got the blue chip more, ratio. They got, they got more blue chip talent than anybody in the country. Cincinnati doesn't have that. That's okay. They're tough as nails. They aren't afraid of anybody. They're going to go in there, and they're going to give Ohio State all they want. They've been looking forward to this game. Ohio State could care less about this game. This is just another pup on their schedule that they're going to try to swat down. This, this could be Cincinnati Super Bowl. Give me $75 Ooh. minus 110 plus 16. Give me the Bearcats. I like it. I might. I might. I might already have a little money sprinkled on the plus 550. Good gracious, on the money line? You think since you... Get, okay, okay. It's okay. just a... It's just a. It could happen. It's just money. It's, it's just, just... It could happen. <laughs> it I could. Can make, I'll make more tomorrow. No, you're okay. right. You're right. Okay, okay. Uh, next up for me, and if I'm not mistaken, I think we match on this one. Rutgers at Iowa. Iowa minus 19 and a half. The Hawkeyes, they got senior quarterback Nate Stanley. They got a bruising rushing attack. Yeah, everybody said they're going to miss those tight ends. Well, they just, they continue to produce them. 
right? Yes. They just they make more of them down there. Keep talking. So about something up. minus one ten, nineteen and a half. I've got a hundred dollars on this one. Uh, I like Iowa a lot this year. I, I understand this could be a look ahead spot going into the Iowa State game. I get that, but Rutgers put up a bunch of points last week against a team that is straight garbage. They also gave up a lot of points against a team that is straight garbage. UMass is awful. That is a bad football team. And Rutgers, all they had to do was hand the ball off, and they were able to put up points. I'm telling you, I don't trust Rutgers for nothing. I like Iowa and the three touchdowns. I'm getting less than three touchdowns. That's right. Which makes it even better. Three touchdowns mean we're covering. I I love this spot here. Minus 19 and a half. I'm all over the Hawkeyes. Give me Iowa. I'm the same way. I think this defense is going to smother. They're going to make life hell for Rutgers. Rutgers might not score. And if they do, they're not going to score much. And when it comes to Rutgers stopping them, they give up 21 points in the first quarter to UMass. UMass. All right. Yeah. Now I know UMass didn't score anymore after that. A, Iowa might not have to score anymore after that. B, they're gonna score every quarter. I, I assure you, they will put points on the board in all four frames of the football game. I like it. I, I love this bet. I got a hundred bucks as well, minus one ten on Ruck, uh, on uh, Iowa beating Rutgers, minus nineteen and a half. All right, and I've got, Lord, I got three more bets. Got after three this. more bets. I got three Good more bets. God dang. Here's what I got. It's too many. West Virginia and Missouri. I'm going over 62 and a half. I do love this game. Over 62 and a half. The metrics have it 69.77. Look, scoring was not the problem for Missouri. The problem for Missouri was that their defense could not stop Wyoming. I think that, uh, what's the kid's name? Austin Kendall? Yep. For for uh, West West Virginia. Virginia, The quarterback, I like him a lot. He showed me a bunch in that game against James Madison. Uh, They looked at adversity in the face and found a way to get by, to put up a couple of touchdowns, to to win that game. I'm telling you, I don't know that Missouri wins this, or I don't know that West Virginia wins this game, but I think that they will put up points. And Missouri, I am very certain, will put up points in this game because I think they're going to put up points basically every week. I like Missouri's offense. I like West Virginia's offense in this spot especially against Missouri's defense right now, because that, that secondary and that line are both kind of eh, putting it lightly. I'm going over 62.5 at minus 110 for 50 bucks on that one. Next after that, I've got Ohio plus 5.5 at Pitt. Now, the metrics go against me on this. They've got Pitt minus 7.43. I think Ohio could win the game. I understand they didn't look great in week one. I get that. They were playing Rhode Island. That was a look-ahead spot. Senior quarterback Nathan Rourke is an absolute beast. I think this is Frank Solich's swan song. He has not announced he's retiring. But I think that after his defensive coordinator, Joe Burrow's dad, (laughs) of course, when he resigned last year, I think that we're getting closer to Solich going out. I think he goes out on top. I think they win the MAC this year. I think that this is the first step in that pit on offense. Looked awful. New offensive coordinator, Mark Whipple, the uh, the former head coach at UMass, yep. who was able to put up points at UMass, but Kenny Pickett can't really throw the football. And they lost those 2,000-yard rushers last year. Correct. I understand that they got the rear ends whipped at home by Virginia last week, and Ohio is not Virginia. But I'm telling you, Ohio's offense – I like them a lot here. I think they're going to be able to outscore Pitt. Uh, I'm not going to put the money line. I might sprinkle a little on the money line, but I, I'm not putting that as an official play. I like that I'm getting five and a half points here. Give me Ohio, 50 bucks, minus 110 here. And then to close it off, before we get to TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast, I'm going with a money line parlay. I had one bite me in the ass last week. I know. You were there. I was there. You watched it when Nevada hit a 56-yard field goal with a true freshman to beat me. But that's okay. Because you don't win. You don't win if you don't play. I've got a money line bet of Boise State, Mississippi State, Kentucky, Washington, and Michigan State. That's 
minus 400, minus 850, minus 650, minus 550, minus 800. All of that parlayed together equals plus 115. I'm going to put $50 on it. I trust it. I like these teams. I think these teams will win. What does that pay you? That pays, what, 60 bucks? Something like that? 50 to make 60? Okay. Somewhere around there. It'll be up on the spreadsheet. So I'm I'm rolling with that one. Um, I like it a lot. Like if you if you were betting ten bucks on it, it'd pay eleven fifty. Yep. But I'm gonna put fifty bucks down on it. So, with that said, let's move into the interview with T.J. Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. He is also the Tampa Bay Bucks sideline reporter. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at Bucks Sideline Guy. Make sure you go download his podcast, subscribe to it, all the wonderful things. TJ, how you doing, buddy? Uh, great to be with you. And listen, it, playing my song when we start talking about picks and underdogs, I am in an especially good mood because da 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 go Tigers, go, and you're part of the world. <laughs> Anytime the Tigers win and Ole Miss loses on the same Saturday, that's it's usually a, a really good Saturday. But it happened at the same time at the Liberty Bowl again, oh, where the oh. Tigers won and Hold Ole Miss on. lost. Hold on. So let's I'm, make in, it I'm in a good mood. Let's, I'm let's in a good mood right now. I'm Tennessee. I, I'm lost. willing to forgive. I'm willing to forgive the fact that my underdog picks were not as good as what they need to be here in the future last <laughs> week. And in part, I think I think you're about to talk to me about one of them that crashed and burned horrifically, like the Hindenburg. Well, let's, uh, with USF. Let's go ahead and jump into it then. Let's let's talk about the South Florida Bulls. You did pick on your show, oh. South Florida. To oh. not necessarily upset, but you said that they would uh, they would at least cover the spread, right? And, and was that game close? In. I don't remember. Was that game was that I, game close? Have they have they played that game yet? Can we <laughs> let USF know if that game has kicked off as of yet? I, I get the feeling that if USF had had eight quarters, they weren't going to score the other night against Wisconsin. Yeah. I don't, guys. I don't know what that was. Uh, just from the standpoint. The, I mean, I know a little bit, and it's easy in hindsight of what it was. You've got a new offensive coordinator, Kerwin Bell, the former Gator legendary quarterback, yep. who, who has had success as a head coach at Division Two. He won a national championship at Division Two, Valdosta State and Valdosta, Georgia, last year, national title. So he comes as the offensive coordinator. So that was part of the problem and part of the frustration. But to not be able to score at all against Wisconsin, who's good but not great, I mean, this is this is not playing Alabama, where you fail to score against Alabama, like pretty much what Duke was Saturday night, and you say, "Okay, we're playing Alabama." Uh, it was just hard to fathom. It, Guys, this was, I don't, I don't get yeah, it. This was a Wisconsin team that gave up thirty-seven points to Minnesota last year. Like it's, yeah. it's a little different. Um, but I do think, like to be fair, Wisconsin is set up to be able to beat smaller teams. And South Florida fans do not like to think of themselves as a smaller team, but that is still a group of five team, and Wisconsin is is built. They were not going to let that kind of crap happen again after BYU came in and embarrassed them last year. So Well, and, you know, and bigger on the offensive line yes. and defensive line figuratively than most, including USF, and it, and it showed uh, the other night. And the real question here, and I know, you know this is – this is a little round table uh, back and forth that we're about to do, is what's going on with Charlie Strong? Because this thing went off the cliff last year after a 7-0 and start, lost six straight games, including the bowl game to end the season, and now you show up and that's the first thing you put on tape in 2019. There are a lot of calls down here in this part of the world in West Central Florida for what is up with Charlie Strong and does he, does he have the chops to get this back in order right now, guys? Wait, you you tell me that because I, again, Chris is a. I, I am the Charlie Strong apologist. Yes, he is I, the apologist. I followed him as the defensive coordinator at Florida. He was outstanding. Yep. He got the Louisville yep. job, and he yep. he took Louisville to places they hadn't been yep. to in a long. He was the first great coach at Louisville in a long, long, long time. Parlayed that into the Texas job. Never got the support from Texas. Never got the support from Boosters. That was my excuse for why he was bad there. And I thought, he's going to go back to the state of Florida. He knows how to recruit here. He can get athletes because there's just so many kids in the state of Florida that are great at playing college football. And I thought he would be better than he has been. Um, And the first year you were right, Chris. The first year they won 10 games and they won a bowl game, but that was primarily Willie Taggart's players 
and an outstanding quarterback named Quentin Flowers, who's the best quarterback yes. in USF's 25 years of football that they've ever had. The problem now is your year three with your own recruits, with your own coaching staff. And again, e- even if Wisconsin beats you like 41 to 17 or, or 49 to 22 or something, that's a little better, a little more palatable than 49 to nothing. So that's what's yeah. got a lot of people up in arms here. And I know to turn it towards the pick segment here, a lot of people are wondering, okay, they go to Georgia Tech, which again, first-year coach, got beat badly uh, last Thursday night by Clemson. Do you dare on, on like a three-dog Thursday look at the Bulls again here? I'm staying away like they're radioactive. I don't know what to think, guys, <laughs> for Saturday. I, I thought the same thing, and, and I had to pull back. I had to stay yeah. away as well. I, I, I wasn't getting tempted into – all right, they're going to go in. They're going to have the best week of practice they've ever had after a shellacking like that. And, and you know, Georgia Tech might not be up to snuff. They can keep it close, whatever. No, I can't, I can't sell that anymore. Well, right. yeah, look, the- USF, USF's got explosive offensive players. So there yes. is a possibility here that they snap out of it. But there's also a very real possibility that Georgia Tech may whip them. And if they do, and Charlie Strong is 0-2, and Charlie Strong is eight straight losses since the middle of last year. I don't know. I don't know for the green and gold. Well, and, and the losses coming at an average of like 24 points per game. Like that's the mm. other side of this. So it, mm. with, Central, or with South Florida, uh, I, I got to say, I'm a little worried about them this weekend, if only because Wisconsin showed that you can whip them up front on both the offensive and the defensive line. Well, that's the only thing Georgia Tech has going for it. Is they've got big boys in the trenches. Yes. I mean, yep. they, they were yep. built to run the football and stop the run. <laughs> and while Jeff Collins is trying to work on on changing that mentality, if you need to get a win at home, like this is the perfect spot where you need a win and you think you can just line up and whip somebody, this is the spot to do it. I, yeah, don't get I'm, fancy. Yeah. You know how to beat them. The game plan is there. Just go do that and figure your offensive scheme out later. Yes. 100%. I'm, I'm with you. All right, now. So for Three Dog Thursday purposes, I'm staying away from that game. I think you get the feeling <laughs> from all three of us. If you're going, if you're going anyway, you're going Georgia Tech's way, especially at home. Yes. Uh, there in that one, guys. Yes, agreed. All right, so so talk to me. Give me uh, give me some picks. Give me some ideas. I Which got, way hey, you're leaning? I, I got some very interesting. Look, stay in the state of Florida. Stay to the south of where I am, southeast of where I am in Boca Raton. The Fighting Lane Kiffins were not very good at Ohio State last week. Don't let that final score fool you because they dressed it up with 15 points in the fourth quarter of, of essentially what was about a 41-3 to game or 42-3 to or whatever it was. But they're, they're home. They've got UCF coming to them. Central Florida has the, the longest regular season win streak right now in the country, 25 regular season wins in a row. This is a dangerous game for the Knights. They have Stanford next week, Pitt after that. This is a maybe a look ahead here, and I, I like Florida Atlantic at home anyway, and I'm getting points here, so I'm leaning towards that one on the Three Dog Thursday podcast. I don't know for sure that I'm going to pull the trigger, but I'm just putting that, that one out there as, as one to keep an eye on, guys. What number are you looking at, TJ? I think I saw six or seven. I don't care. So if I was getting so three. It, it moved in your getting, direction. All right, so uh, the Vegas Insiders just – Kind of gives a, a, a like a compilation, and they got it seven and a half. I'm looking at betnow.eu, and you can get it at plus ten. Yeah, well, I don't care if I was getting three; they may win the game outright. Oh, so Florida Atlantic like may win this game outright. Just be careful. I've done a couple of games on radio out of that place uh, at FAU Stadium that they've remodeled. It's going to be jacked Saturday night because this is a chance to upset a state rival. Just be leery of that game for well, UCF. Your money line, if you wanted to play a little little wager on that, would be plus 310, and I love wow. Super Dogs. Oh, I yeah. love, love, love well, Super Dogs. We can get down with that. We can get down with that. All right, you got anything else for us before we uh, before Give we hop me, over to I know you got to go. I know you got to go. <laughs> Give me another look at the Black Knights of the Hudson Army playing a noon Eastern time game at Michigan. Here we go again with a look ahead for Michigan, who's playing next week. Da, 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 the Wisconsin Badgers on the road. That triple option gives everybody fits. I know they barely beat Army. They barely beat Rice last week, but that is a ton of points. They almost upset. I know it's a different year, different players. They almost upset Oklahoma a year ago in Norman. 
that uh, what is it 23 24 points they're getting i think they can keep it close at the big house so i'm leaning heavily on army and you'll have to find out on the podcast if i officially take that one but we'll obviously be talking about this game <laughs> as well i like that one a lot i i do like that one i do like that one all right we're gonna hop off here we're gonna have you on the nfl show as well so everybody that's on youtube go check that out uh go check out tj's podcast three dog thursday you can follow him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guide. TJ, we appreciate you, buddy. Thank you, boys.